The Week in Space. CBS News selective coverage of the mission of Gemini 9. Now the start of astronaut Gene Cernan's two-and-a-half-hour walk in space. Reporting from the CBS News Space Center at the McDonnell Aircraft Plant in St. Louis, correspondent Walter Cronkite. Good morning, and everything is going well for Eugene Cernan's walk in space. The longest man has yet attempted only the third time. A man has stepped out of a spacecraft into the void of space and floated independent of the machine that took him there. Eugene Cernan is scheduled to step out of that Gemini 9 spacecraft out over Hawaii in about five minutes from now. It has been a very restful night for the two astronauts. You remember it was uh, the fact that they were fatigued after their very difficult rendezvous operation yesterday that postponed this walk for 24 hours. Well, they napped yesterday afternoon deep slumber for two hours. Then they had 10 hours of a sleep period last night, during which they slept soundly for about four hours each and dozed another six hours. But they awoke very chipper this morning, a chipper hello down there when they awakened. And ever since then, their voices have uh, uh, shown some of the excitement, perhaps restrained, but excited uh, of this forthcoming space walk. This 32-year-old Navy lieutenant commander is all ready to go. The cabin has been depressurized as far as we know here now. That process began almost 25 minutes ago, and it means that now the, the prime astronaut, the commander of the spacecraft, Tom Stafford, and Eugene Cernan are depending on their, the pressure of their spacesuits to sustain them in space. The hatch uh, will be opened in another uh, three and a half minutes, and Cernan will emerge from that hatch. He will not uh, step out of the spacecraft for another several minutes after that. Uh, he will stand in the seat of the uh, spacecraft and uh, uh, take in a micrometeorite collection box that is on the spacecraft or mounted right behind him. That box uh, collecting and finding out about the uh, various matter that is floating around in space. He will then uh, adjust a camera and eventually uh, step out of the spacecraft. CBS News color coverage. Gemini 9 mission will continue in a month. Well, what do you know? Don Juan's back in town. Who's the lucky girl tonight? <laughs> What's that, Laura boy? Trade secret, sis. Kills germs. Oh, come on. Get with it. But well, kills germs, doesn't it? But does it give you long-lasting protection? Well, after a while, I do worry about my breath. Never fear. 100's here. What's 100? Colgate 100. It's a new oral antiseptic. I always use 100 to feel confident, day or night. I just do what it says in the label. 100 gives hours of power. Hey, I can feel it go to work. You're right. When 100 was tested directly against the best-known mouthwash, 100 proved better protection against germs for hours. Hours. <coughs> Never fear. 100's here. <laughs> Always use 100 to feel confident, day or night. New Colgate 100. Let's listen to a recording from the Pacific uh, uh, being played back from Houston. difficult translation to understand. They are reporting preparations to open the hatch. I'm 
you see uh, being super there on your screen are times to the opening of the hatch. is the recovery of the micrometeorite uh, box. That's the little box uh, right behind uh, Cernan's uh, head uh, as he stands in the hatch, which he's doing now. He's standing in the hatch. He's turning around and trying to... This is our simulation here in McDonald. What's going on right now? This is a small box, uh, which is to measure the impact of the micrometeorites. Little specks, hardly larger than uh, pebbles of sand, smaller than pebbles of sand. Scientists interested in just how hard they do impact a body, and this uh, box has okay. been. Okay, the S12 What you're hearing is a conversation between Cernan and Stafford. He's handing down this micrometeorite okay. box. Yeah, as to how much of this workload he can carry in space. Come on, way back to that handrail. Yep. So it's a long way to that handrail. Now he's attaching the camera, which will face forward, as you see there. Uh, that head you see in the screen there is that of uh, flight surgeon Chuck Berry, Charles Berry. Yep, you better hold it, Colonel. The man you see in that okay. space man you see in that space suit is Miles no. McClure. Uh, to 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 Okay. Okay. That, 
broken transmission sounds as if Cernan has stepped out of the spacecraft. Hey, Tom, put me back. I don't see anything waving off the adapter from here. Telling Stafford to hold me down, which uh, I assume would be holding the umbilical down and keeping me. I have to bite it out a little bit. Okay, let me try to double. Okay. Hold. Let the camera in, and let me check the settings again, Tom. Three frames per second, 200. And F16, huh? Listening to the conversation between Cernan floating in space now outside of his capsule, as nearly as we can get to the indication and with our simulation here, of course, he's talking back to Stafford and that radio command link. Thank actually, you. Actually, now, actually, well, I added in, but it wouldn't snap down. Okay. Add it. Actually, it's a link along that tether line you see there, 25 feet of umbilical cord. That contains the life support uh, system and communications link from the spacecraft life support system out through that chest pack. clearly determine it from the uh, rather garbled conversation we're hearing, we're listening in on between Cernan and Stafford. Uh, at this point, he should be attaching that tether uh, out there so he won't float uh, uh, too far free and it won't uh, tangle. Well, it's not fit, but it's in. Okay, Tom, let me turn around before I... Okay, Tom, let me turn around before I... Okay, Tom, let me turn around before I... Cernan going about his duties in a very businesslike way, it sounded to us here on the ground. The communication a little choppy to start with. They improved as we moved through the center of the Hawaii circle. And we lost uh, acquisition about a minute ago. We should pick them up again in about two minutes via California. At 49 hours and 26 minutes elapsed time, Gene did retrieve the S-12 micrometeorite impact emulsion dish. He also deployed the handrails about two minutes later. And he noted it was quite a distance back to the handrail. He seemed to have a little trouble setting up his EVA 16 millimeter camera. And now we have reacquired by California. Let's go back to the uh, spacecraft. We should have steady transmission and good transmission. Houston standing by. Okay. We should have pretty good transmission now for the next uh, 20 minutes until they lose the signal again over Antigua. The pass over Southern California and down around the Texas border in Mexico, out over the Gulf, uh, but in communication with the Texas stations, then in the Kennedy Station, Bermuda, and Antigua before we finally lose the signal again on the spacewalk. Uh, loud and barely clear, Tom.